Alright, welcome to Fire Link Shrine and your first step in Laudron, or your first true step in Laudron. What we're going to do now is we're going to just walk around and explore this first starting area of the game. This is where the gloves are off and you will now be able to start playing the game for real. The first thing you need to acknowledge here is this bonfire. This bonfire is where you can level up in this game and the first thing I'm going to do is start pumping my dexterity to, to, to aiming for level 12 in dexterity. That is because I want to use a particular item very soon, which I won't spoil for you. So, moving onwards, um, um, the other thing I should point out here is humanity. In Dark Souls, you can use what is called an, an item which is called humanity. Humanity lets you regain or undo the hollowing process and regain your humanity. By doing so, it allows you to summon other players who are playing online at the same time as you, or to invade their worlds and attack them. It also has other benefits such as talking to particular characters at certain times and other lots of lovely effects. I'm not going to use it just yet, but if I did I would be looking a lot better than I am now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go talk to this gentleman here. Before I do, it's really recommended that you talk, hear everything that everyone has to say because through, it's through the little bits of dialogue in this game how you actually piece together the lore. The story starts off very slow at the beginning but as you go on and onwards you're gonna get these moments where you're just like oh that's what he was talking about and you'll start to understand what's going on here a bit more. So let me start off with talking to this lovely gentleman who's sitting on the rock here. Well what do we have here? You must be a new arrival. Let me guess, fate of the undead, right? Well, you're not the first. But there's no salvation here. You'd have done better to rot in the undead asylum. But too late now. <sighs> well, since you're here, let me help you out. There are actually two bells of awakening. One's up above in the undead church. The other is far, far below, in the ruins at the base of Blight Town. Ring them both, and something happened. Brilliant, right? Not much to go on, but I have a feeling that won't stop you. So, off you go. It is why you came, isn't it? To this accursed land of the undead? <laughs> One thing I never did when I first played this game was question how does this guy know exactly why I'm here? We only just found out about this mission a couple of minutes ago from the dying knight in the asylum. So how does he know about the mission of the undead? Well, it suggests that in fact you are not the only person who has come from the undead asylum to go on this mission to ring the bells of awakening. And it could be perhaps that even he's been on that mission before but he's quite given up on doing so. Who knows? As we play more we'll find out more about it. First of all let's see if he has anything else to say. Ah, your face. You're practically hollow. But who knows? Going hollow could solve quite a bit. <laughs> Mm, what? Restoring your humanity? Well, there are a few ways to go about it. Collect it bit by bit from corpses. Or you can butter up a cleric and get yourself summoned. And the quickest way, although I'd never do it, is to kill a healthy undead and pillage its humanity. Coveting thy neighbor is only human, after all. <laughs> what are you looking at? Don't try anything clever. You might regret it. One thing is, um, the reason why he said that is because you can actually attack NPCs in this game. I could beat him up if I wanted to, but I'm not going to because I have no reason for doing so. You can actually attack almost anyone and anything in this game which in some cases is a good idea but in many cases is not a good idea so let's carry on talking to him mm -hmm. what 
You want to hear more? Oh, that's all we need. Another inquisitive soul. Well, listen carefully then. One of the bells is up above in the undead church, but the lift is broken. You have to climb the stairs up the ruins and access the undead bird through the waterway. The other bell is back down below the undead bird, within the plague-infested blight town. But I die again before I step foot in that cesspool. <laughs> so the bells are in two places. One is in the Undead Parish, one is in Blight Town. The Undead Parish is the one that we're going to go to first because it's easier. Then Blight Town is a bit more difficult, so we'll go there a little bit later on. Bloody hell, what is it now? You ask too many questions. Mm -hmm. I'm not up for chatting. And that's all he has to say. So the first thing which I'm going to do now in this game is actually I'm going to show you a bit about my character. My character's name is Thor. I'm not going to explain completely why I've chosen a theme to play as a female character named Thor. Let's just say that some of the abilities which I'm going to be getting along the way um, as I progress through the game will kind of represent the Marvel Comics hero. And if you didn't know, recently Thor has given up the original Thor as the, ma the male version of Thor has actually given up the job of being the hero of Asgard and now is a woman. Well, he didn't become a woman, sorry. He didn't have a sex change or nothing. But there is now a woman who has taken his place and up his mantle and now Thor is a main, Thor's main character is now a female, which I thought was pretty cool. I love strong female character types, so should be kind of interested to see what they do with her. Anyway, enough babble. Uh, my character is started off, I chose a cleric to start off with, therefore I'm part of the Way of the White Covenant. And I'm going to be focusing on faith-based miracle spells, which are the equivalents of white magic, if you've ever played a game like Final Fantasy. And also using hammers, like this mace here. So the first thing I always do at the beginning of the game is collect a bunch of items which are lying around this area here. If you can look off into the distance, you see that bright white light. You've got an item there, one on the bridge above, and we've got a whole lot of items around us. So I'm going to go get those just now. Let me introduce you to someone, guys. This is Petrus of Thorland. He is a cleric like myself and thus he wields a, mate, a hammer weapon like myself and he also sells miracle spells. Let's talk to him. Hello there. I believe we are not acquainted. I am Petrus of Thorland. Have you business with us? If not, I'd prefer to keep a distance if possible. Charming. Hello there. I realize that I have requested that we retain our distance. But I also want you to know that it is not meant in ill will. Here, take this as a token of peace. No, go ahead. It's for you. Oh my, you again. Oh, I know. How about this? I have to await my companions here anyway. So what if I were to teach you some miracles? Would that please you? Very well. Then first, a covenant with the gods. Now let me share my miracles. Only their ultimate effectiveness will be determined by your efforts and your faith. Petrus is a useful character because you can buy miracles from him. I'm not going to be buying any of these miracles because when I played this game originally, I never found mo any of them really too useful to have. But for those who maybe want to experiment, you can try them out yourself. But I'm not going to do any of that. Let me My companions are Milady and her young knights. She is young, but burdened by an undead mission. We are her defenses to keep her from harm. We're going to meet 
his fair lady and his companions a little bit later on when they arrive. An undead mission? Regrettably, I cannot share that with you. But you are my pupil. Perhaps if you show your faith. Come again. The effectiveness... Okay, that's enough for Petrus for now. So now I'm going to go get some more items. There is one up the staircase here. This is the lift to the undead parish where the first bell of awakening is. But as the crestfallen warrior suggested, it is actually broken and we can't use it just now. However, if you drop down, there is a secret path here, which leads to three treasure chests. There's one more treasure chest just over here, although the item inside it is not very useful. Beneath us is a graveyard, and within any typical graveyard are skeletons. At this point in the game, the skeletons are pretty tough to fight, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to run through this graveyard and grab some of the items which are lying in here, and hopefully I don't get killed. That's not good. Oh, that was lucky. Oh, gotta get around. Oh, this is not good. I'm gonna die. Yep, I died. Oh, well, well I got what I came here for, really. Which, what I really came here for was the pair of binoculars, which is gonna allow me to see from far away. But, yeah. There's still an item which I am going to have to go back there. There's two items actually which I have to go back there for. So I'm just going to run through and get those again. In the future, um, Dark Souls is the type of game where you have to die a lot to learn how to play the game. It's much like a fighting game like I compared it to earlier on. Where you learn by losing. Now in this game, just because for the sake of the playthrough, just so it doesn't get too boring or repetitive for you at home, I might cut the video at times just so I don't show the same thing over and over again but for this point, point there's no point me really doing that just here I'm gonna just run through here and I'm gonna grab one more item if I can now I'm gonna dash back to the bonfire Before going, starting our quest and going any further, I am actually going to take a bit of a detour. I'm going to go down underneath here. First of all, I want to show you this character here. This is a firekeeper. Her soul is linked to the bonfire which is up above and it keeps it aflame. What's great about the firekeeper's souls is that they have infinite amounts of humanity, making them very attractive to players. If you manage to get your hands on a Firekeeper's Soul, you can use it to upgrade your Essence Flask, which is your healing item for this game. Effectively, these are just big potions that you can drink. Okay. Uh, 
Okay folks, welcome to a new area called New Londo Ruins. This is a bit of a higher level area, not too high, about mid area. And it's designed for you to come back to later on in the game, in fact much later on in the game. New Londo Ruins is an area which has been submerged in water. And I'm not going to say too much more about why there is just yet, because that will ruin and spoil the story for you. We're going to come through here to grab an item a little bit later on, but first of all, we're going to make a quick passage. I'll pick up this. We're going to make a quick passage to another area. When you start off the game, and you're like design, you can pick a gift to start off with. And the gift which I chose is called the Master Key. The Master Key is opens any basic lock and lets you get to certain parts of the game earlier than you sh you're supposed to be. For example, it's going to let me get to this area called the Valley of the Drakes or Valley of Drakes and a little bit earlier than I should be. The reason why I want to do this is because there is some equipment which is, I feel was almost designed for lower level, yet you wouldn't be able to get it unless you came back at a higher level. So I'm going to use, get those items and I'm going to use them at the start of the game. We're walking up across this bridge right now and we're coming up to what is an undead dragon. It's probably one of the last few dragons alive left in this game and like many of us he is cursed also. As you can see he is rotting away, just resting away his days. If you go up to the dragon like this, he won't normally bother you. But if you get closer to him and take his items, he will start to. So I'm going to grab this very quickly and run away. Then I'm going to grab these two. And then hopefully I can run away just in time. Nope, he got me. Which is fine, I got what I came for. Okay, let me just show you the items which I just got. The first item which I got hit there was a Storer's Straight Sword. A Storer is a place... Oops, let me put that back on. Come on. A Storer is a place which is outside of Lordran and many characters who, have, who we, we're going to be... have come from a Storer. In fact, the character which released us at the start of the game from our jail cell, he came from a Storer. Now, we're going to be finding a little bit more about that place along the way, so I'm not going to say too much here. This sword is from Astora and it's used by those um, superior knights from that place. As well as that, we also got the Dragon Crest Shield. If I put that on, oops, come on. This also came from Astora, from a high ranked warrior. I'm going to use that because it's better than the Easter Shield. Whereas the East West Shield is only reduces your damage by 88% if you look at the way it says physical. This one reduces it by 100%. So when I block, I won't take any damage from now on. I'm going to go back down to New London Ruins now because there is an item which I need to get from there. And there is another NPC. You too. Okay, we are now going to meet the very first blacksmith in the game. This is Rickert of Vinheim. Vinheim is another place which is outside of Lordran, which seems to be a common place for those who are work working magic based arts mm -hmm. to come from. Well, this is unusual. This is unusual. You haven't lost your head. lost your head. And more importantly, you're free. How on earth? Well, I shouldn't pry. I'm Rickert of Vinheim. I was once an established smith. Look at me now. Can you believe it? Hmm? What is it? What is it? Have you? Have you? <laughs> oh no. Don't worry. I've no intention of escape. It's safe here. I can't bear the thought of going hollow out there. Although, I must admit, I'm not much to occupy myself. How about this? I could forge your weapons, albeit with rather minimal tools. I'll show you what made me the best in the night. 
So Ricker and many other blacksmiths in this game can reinforce your weapons and upgrade them for you, which is something I'm going to be doing a lot of through this playthrough. I'm not going to do any of that right now, but Ricker is very important to come back to. Smithing helps soothe my nerves. So I'll wait for him to finish Don't talking. Wither away our lives. Rick, it's important to come back to if you want to invest in ma weapons. Ah. Hello. Hello. What weapons have you brought? What, hmm? what, is what is it? There's nothing to talk about. To talk about. We're both cursed. We're both cursed. Undead. 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 But, but what's there really to moan about? So he's really cheerful about the way things are right now. Right, the first, the last thing we're going to do in New London Ruins before we leave is grab a... And then we're going to start making some progress towards the first Bell of Awakening. Looks like I'm gonna die here. Oh well, no big deal. So, in New London Ruins, as you can see, the place is infested with ghosts, and you can't fight them unless you have used a transient curse or you are cursed yourself. So, we're not gonna go back there anytime soon, but we got what we came for our first Firekeeper Soul. So, that lets me now upgrade my Essence Flask so that I recover more health when I try to heal. Okay, now it's time to start the journey. So, the way forward is to go up there, and that's where we shall go.